Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Um, if you've not seen one of my videos before, I'm Lenny and I own six Daxons, one smooth and five long hair. Today I'm going to be talking about toilet training. Quite a few people who have watched my videos who already own a Dachshund have said how difficult they've been finding it to toilet train. So um, this video is going to be aimed at not only puppy owners, so first time puppy owners trying to toilet train from day one, but also to those who have still not been able to master toilet training with their adult dachshund. So yes, I know what you're thinking, are all of my dachshunds house trained? And I would say they are 99.9% .9 house trained and that 0.01% is usually my mistake. Just a disclaimer, if you've not seen one of my videos before, I do have the dogs in the room with me, so you can often hear them in my videos. Not really a lot I can do about that, and you'll see why in a minute. Sun's suddenly come out, say hello. So the tips that I'm gonna be giving you today are both relevant to puppy owners and adult dachshund owners. I guess this is kind of relevant to any breed, but I'm gonna be talking about dachshunds today because that's what I have the most experience in. The only difference between the puppy tips and the adult tips is purely that the time that you're gonna wait between taking the dog out will be shorter for a puppy and longer for an adult because adults can hold it for longer. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. So my first tip is if you have bought puppy pads or you own puppy pads for your dog, chuck them in the bin. <laughs> puppy pads just completely confuse things. The thing with puppy pads is that a lot of the products that you will buy will have a smell in them to encourage them to urinate on them. So quite a lot of the time people will find that their dog will always urinate on the pads but then they might do their number two somewhere else, generally speaking hiding them somewhere. So they do just confuse things, so just chuck them in the bin. I'm not going to talk any more about puppy pads because that's the tip, throw them in the bin. <laughs> the second tip is to buy baby gates or have some sort of way to keep your dog or your puppy in the same room as you for the first few weeks of house training. So we use baby gates anyway for various reasons. We use them to continue to keep them in the same room as us because we've still got a seven month old puppy and also to stop them from running up and down the stairs as and when they please so that they don't do that when we're not around. So what you wanna do is install, as I say, a puppy gate or a way to keep them in the same room as you for at least three to four weeks. And this is for puppies and for adult dogs. The thing with dachshunds, um, I guess with any dog, is that they will give you a cue when they are going to go to the toilet. That usually includes sniffing the ground, pacing around, walking towards the door. So you will generally have a cue. And a lot of the time it is that we have missed this cue because they've been in another room from us. So by having these measures in place so that they can't be in a separate room from us, we are ensuring that they can't go into another room, try and give us a cue, and then go to the toilet when we ignore it. Now you might be thinking, well, what if I have to work? <laughs> so my advice for this is to keep them in a smaller area that has a hard floor that you can clean easily and remove any smell of the fact that they have urinated or gone in that room. And also take them out to the toilet before you go to work and as soon as you return. And now you might be thinking, well, what if they don't go before I go to work? So what I always say is don't try and chuck them out just before you go. Set yourself a timer to go half an hour before you are leaving for work. Go out into the garden and encourage them to go. And so if you have taken them out and they have gone to the toilet before you've gone to work, they should be able to hold it for three to four hours. So then when you get home, don't give them loads of attention when you get home, take them straight out into the garden and don't go back in until they've gone to the toilet. If you can take three to four weeks off of work, then fantastic. I would definitely recommend if you are getting a new puppy or rehoming an adult dog, or if your house training has become a serious problem for your house, taking those three to four weeks off of work so that you can make sure the house training is completed and that they fully understand that they should be going to the toilet outside. So now I'm gonna talk about times that you would want to take them outside, and this is relevant again to adults and puppies. So I've already said that you are going to want to look out for those cues. Other times that you're gonna to wanna to take them out is after they've had a meal, after they've had a drink, and when they wake up from a nap. Now this is where the timings are slightly different. So with a puppy, I always say if they've just had a meal or they've had a drink, take them out within 10 to 30 minutes afterwards. So it's completely up to you how long you want to spend outside, but with all of this, you're gonna to have to be outside with them. So try and aim it for 10 to 30 minutes afterwards. You will get to know your puppy and how long they usually take before they need the toilet. So once you know, you can then follow that and start making it longer and longer as they get older. 
With adult dogs, you're gonna to want to wait 30 minutes to an hour after they've eaten or drank, in my experience. Now, your dog might be very different and might go straight after they've had their food. It really depends on what they're being fed. That's gonna have a huge influence on how long they take to need to go to the toilet, and also how much energy they use and how much activity they do after they've eaten or drank as well, because obviously the activity will have an effect on their bowels and when they need to go. So really you can make up that time yourself, but generally speaking, it should get longer from puppy to adult. I have said this before, but I'm just gonna repeat it. You will want to take them straight out after they've had a nap. Now that again is for puppies and adults if you are house training. So next is what to do once you've taken them outside. So here's an important part of this tip. Do not leave the back door open and expect them to choose to go outside. If they're not house trained, they're not going to choose to do that. And actually, it's not them trying to rebel against you. It's because they just don't know the difference between inside and outside. So you are going to have to keep the back door closed and you're going to have to actively take them to the back door or ask them to follow you to the back door, open the back door and you are going to have to step outside with them and close the door behind you so that they can't run back into the house. You're then going to have to wait outside with them and keep encouraging them to go with a cue word or phrase that you prefer. So mine is hurry up. Nemo, hurry up then. <laughs> Which my neighbours have said to me, stop rushing your dogs when they need the toilet. But it doesn't mean that I'm rushing them, it's just a phrase that I used and now they know what it means. So when I say hurry up to them, they look at me as if to go, okay, I'll go to the toilet. Your cue word might be something like, go wee wee, hurry up go to the toilet, it's completely up to you. But you're gonna have to keep saying that cue word. Now you're not gonna say, go wee wee, go wee wee, go wee wee. You're gonna say, go on then, or go wee wee, and then wait. Let them sniff around. If they start heading back towards you, say, no, go wee wee. And keep encouraging them to go until they go. Hopefully none of my dogs go because I'm saying hurry up and go wee wee a lot right now in my living room. <laughs> So now, once they've gone to the toilet, which could take 10 minutes, it could take one minute, it could take 20 minutes. So you are going to have to be patient and you're gonna to have to wait out there with them. If you know they haven't been for a few hours, then they will go. So you're gonna wait outside with them and once they have gone, you're gonna give them plenty of praise. Good girls, well done. Now, you will know your dog. If your dog is easily praised by toys, then obviously you can give them a toy that they are wanting. If they're easily praised by food, then you can give them a tiny treat. But my dogs are happily praised by just praise. So well done, well done. good girl, good boy, and a little bit of a rub and a cuddle. <laughs> then once they've gone, you're gonna take them back inside. So you've taken them outside, they've gone to the toilet, you've given them plenty of praise, you're going to take them back inside, and then once again, you're gonna start looking for the next cue, you're gonna start looking for when they've had food, you're gonna start looking for when they've had a drink, and also you might want to set yourself a timer to go every hour for a puppy, or, or every three to four hours for an adult. Of course, they are going to make mistakes, but what you're not going to want to do is tell them off for these mistakes especially if you left the room and you come back in and they've done the mistake, if you tell them off for it, they're not gonna have a clue what you're telling them off for, and especially not putting their face in it or anything like that, because all that that will teach them is to hide going to the toilet inside, because they're not going to be learning that it was naughty to go inside, they're gonna be learning or thinking that it's naughty to go in general. So they won't go outside when you're outside because they're not gonna to want to do it in front of you ever because you tell them off when they go. So definitely don't do that. You're going to want to just clean it up and move on and then go back to checking for the next cues and for the next timing to take them out. If you have carpets, this is a lot more difficult. The smell of urine sticks in carpets no matter what you do. So if you can, to avoid these issues and to avoid them urinating in the living room or in the areas that have carpet, especially when they're young, what you could do if you're really trying to stop this from happening is you could start by only allowing them in the areas that have hard flooring so that you can properly clean it up. Now, if that's not a possibility, then you just have to make sure that you are cleaning up your carpets with a solution that completely removes the smell that they've been there. 
I found personally that the best way to remove that smell is just with normal fabric powder or washing powder. So what you would clean your clothes with. That seems to really get the smell out and clean any of the urinating stain. The thing with number twos is they're a lot easier to clean up and then you can just rub it down again with a little bit of washing powder or something, but they don't tend to keep the smell as much. And so the dog isn't then encouraged to go again in that area. But the issue is if you've had dogs for years that haven't been house trained and you've got carpets, those carpets very likely just hold the urine smell now and you might not be able to smell it, but they will. So they will consider those carpets the place that they go to the toilet. Now, in extreme cases, you might have to just replace those carpets to do all of this training replace it with hard flooring it would be a really good investment anyway <laughs> so you might want to replace them if you absolutely can't replace them then you'll want to get a good carpet cleaner and clean those carpets through before you start this training if you're starting fresh with a puppy that hasn't even been in your house before then this is a lot easier because you can keep them as much as you can in the hard floor areas and if you don't have that many hard floor areas then you can make sure you clean up that urine straight away so I'm gonna talk a little bit now about getting through the night. And I'm gonna talk puppies first. So in my opinion, for the first three to four weeks, you should make sure the puppy is sleeping in an area that you are nearby. So that doesn't mean not crate training them if you're really keen to crate train. It just means that you would have the crate next to your bed. That means that in the middle of the night, if they choose to whine at say 1 a.m., you can take them outside, encourage them to go to the toilet and put them straight back to bed. Now I'm not gonna talk about crate training in this video because I've definitely got a whole video's worth to talk about with that. But I do think it's really important to reinforce house training throughout the night. You might be worried that then they're learning to that you will get up when they whine in the middle of the night and then they'll start asking to get out of the crate all the time. But you'll know if they're asking to go to the toilet or whether they're just asking for your attention. So if they've got from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. and have asked and whined, they probably need the toilet. Whereas if you have taken them out to the toilet at 10 p.m. and they went and then they end up whining at 11 p.m., they probably don't need the toilet. So you can ignore that whine. You've just got to use a little bit of common sense in this and start to know your puppy because every puppy is very different in how long they can hold needing to go to the toilet. With an adult dog, they should be able to hold it, but maybe they won't initially. So what you're going to want to do, and you might feel like this is going to completely set you back, if possible, is keep them again in a crate in your bedroom, or if they're in a crate downstairs or they sleep downstairs, then set yourself up some sort of baby monitor, or you can actually for free, just call yourself on Skype on a laptop downstairs to your phone and keep it on and all night so that you can hear when they wake up and start fussing and you can go downstairs and take them out again. I really believe that the way that people go wrong with house training is that they are not reinforcing overnight going outside and so the mistakes are happening when you're out of the room in bed asleep and no one is reinforcing that toilet training so then they end up relearning that they can go inside and that's obviously not okay. And it can mean that they can end up destroying carpets and things like that. And again, making them smell. Diet also has a huge influence on how much they need the toilet. So you might wanna look at their diet. Again, I'm gonna do another video on diet specifically. So please do subscribe to my channel and you will see that one as well. So I'm just gonna recap everything I said really quickly because there might be things that you've forgotten by the time you get to the end of this video. So I'm gonna talk about this as relevant to puppy and adult dogs, but for puppies, the time might be a bit shorter, and for adults, the timing might be a bit longer. That's all you need to know in terms of that. So firstly, chuck away the pads. No more puppy pads. <laughs> Secondly, for three to four weeks, or until you know that they are house trained, and it really has to be shown that they are house trained and that you trust them, <laughs> you're going to keep them only in rooms that you're in. So that means you might want to baby gate your house a bit more or find ways to barricade off areas, especially if you've got carpeted areas, keeping them away from them if you can. The fourth is you're going to then be looking out for cues and that is things like sniffing the floor, pacing, going to the door. You're also going to be looking for times to take them out. So after eating, after drinking or after heavy play or activity. Also making sure that you take them out straight after they've had a nap or been to sleep. Once they're outside, you're going to want to encourage them to go with a cue word that is completely up to you. So you might use what I use, which is hurry up, go wee wee, or anything you like, really. It's completely up to you. 
Then once they've gone, you're going to want to heavily praise them. So that's going to be well done, good boy, maybe a treat, maybe a toy, completely up to you. And then you're going to bring them back indoors and you're going to make sure that you then start that all over again. So looking out for cues, etc. I won't keep repeating myself. <laughs> After those three to four weeks, they should be completely house trained. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't make mistakes. And it doesn't mean that you might ever be able to give them free reign of the house. You might want to keep some rooms that they just aren't allowed in. Me personally, I've just kept the baby gates here. It doesn't hurt them to be in the same room as me as much as possible. There are certain times in the day where they get free reign of the house. That's straight after their morning wee and poo because I know that they don't need to go again. So they get free reign and it means they can be a bit more active. And they also get free reign after they've had their evening meal and been to the toilet as well. But throughout the day, I just find it easier to avoid the mistakes by keeping them in a smaller area with me. And that means that if I'm in the living room, they're in the living room. If I'm in the kitchen, they're in the kitchen. And if I'm in the bedroom, they're in the bedroom. Again, they still make mistakes. A lot of the time it's my fault. So I might wake up in the morning and I get distracted and I don't take them straight out. And then someone runs downstairs because someone's left the door open and they go downstairs because they've been trying to tell me and I wasn't there. Three to four weeks might seem like a really long amount of time to be spending doing this, but honestly, once they have got it, you will find it so much easier and it takes a lot of the stress away from you worrying where they've gone or when they're going. And it also means that when you go and visit family and friends, it's very unlikely that they will go in their house as well because they will know the routine and you will know how long you can wait between they need them needing to go again and also you'll be very aware of their cues so that's my top tips for toilet training i've probably repeated myself quite a few times here but i just really want to push on the every single step because every step is so important i'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos on my top tips and things like that because i have got six accents and so i've learned a lot through them all having different personalities and different ways of learning so if you want to see more top tips then please do subscribe and like this video, comment below what tips you want to know about or learn about. And also, there is also this little notification bell that appears somewhere. If you could click on that as well, then you will be instantly notified the second I put up a new video. So thanks again for watching another one of my videos or watching this video. And as I always say, it is Dachshund, not Dachshound, not Dachshund, Dachshund. <laughs>